Past year, 2020, and the few months into 2021 has been a different time, a difficult time, and a blessed time for all of us. In God's blessings, we still have a pastor who's been with us for 18 years and who's gaining strength through God to share with us today for this 18th anniversary is Pastor Dale Gibson who's going to come forth and bring the message. He's going to pour out God's spirit upon us and also let us know how blessed we are to have Pastor Calvin, who's been with us for 18 years. Pastor Gibson. Let's Israel walk themselves against me, saying, my own hand has saved me. Now, therefore, go to Proclaim, proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. And there returned of the people twenty and two thousand, and there remained ten thousand. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people are yet too many. Bring them down unto the water, and I will try them for thee there. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, This shall go with thee. The same shall go with thee, and of whomsoever I say unto thee, this shall not go with thee, the same not go. So he brought down the people into the water, and the Lord said unto Gideon, Everyone that lappeth of, of the water with his tongue, as a dog lap, him shall thou set by himself. Likewise, everyone that bowed down upon his knees to drink, and the number of them that lapped, putting their hands to their mouth, were three hundred men. But all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. The last verse, And the Lord said unto Gideon, By the three hundred men that laugh, will I save you and deliver the Midianites into thine hands, and let all the other people go, every man unto his place. Amen. I realize this is a pastor's anniversary. Amen. But I want to leave with something with you, Pastor, uh, tonight is the victory is not in your size, but it's in your source. The victory is not in your size, but it's in your source. Amen. Everybody is. Gracious Father, we come again to say thank you. God, we thank you for life. We thank you for the opportunity to gather around our friends one more time. And dear Heavenly Father, we come on in honor of Pastor Calvin, his lovely wife, and the church family here at New Life. Lord, we just thank you for allowing him to be able to celebrate one more time. And dear God, we ask that you continue to grace him, anoint him from afar. Dear God, give him exactly what he needs at this time. We know, Pastor, the Lord, through a difficult time in this pandemic. But Lord, you have called us and ordained us to do whatever needs to be done. So Lord, we want to thank you. Thank you, New Life, for recognizing uh, your pastor on today. And God, we pray that you would just continue to keep them. Uh, and we'll ever, ever give you praise and honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, choir. Give us one more selection. We're going to go on.
everybody. Amen. We thought we could move a high on the prop. We thought nobody could touch us. But how many know God says, I'm still in control? And a lot of things that are happening in our world today, we brought them on our own self. But God was trying to tell us, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek that way, will turn their wicked ways, then I will heal the land. Come on, somebody. So we still look at our nation today, and people still
us in our, in our source. Amen? Amen. See, Pastor, amen, there are people you know that know how to cry out to God for some help. When the money is funny and the change is strange and you can't get along at the bank, we have learned how to cry out for some help. Do I have anybody up in here that could not depend on a little bit your refrigerator? Come on, somebody. And feel like you're going to make it to next week. There's somebody that had a look at their refrigerator and wonder where the next bill is coming from. Are there anybody up in here, amen, have looked at their bank account and wonder how you're going to pay bills for next month or this month, amen. So it lets me know you got to have some faith in the Lord to look at a small side and know that it's not in that side, but it's in the source that I have. It's in the almighty God because God is able to take little and make much. Do I have anybody out there that can be a witness to say that God has made little and taken little and made much out of it? I don't know about you all, but I'm not a millionaire. Come on, somebody. I want you all to know I'm thanking God for what God has given to me because he has taken a little and made much out of it. Can I get a witness? Amen. But the time, this time, amen. So it is at the lowest moment in their lives. Come on, somebody. Amen. And hopefully, amen. Let me get back to our thing. Amen. God calls, amen. God calls Gideon, who is feeling insecure and imitate, intimidated. Excuse me. God calls Gideon, who is scared himself, and tell him he has an assignment for him to do. Pastor Cowan, 17 years ago, you would have never thought that God had called you to pastor Jones Chapman first of New Life. Which one was it? What? New Life? Amen. New Life. Amen. One of the reasons why you probably thought that God, because I went there too. Amen. God, I know you don't want me to pastor my folks. Come on, somebody. Amen. I, I know my people. Come on. They're my sisters, my brother, my mom, everybody. Oh, God, you can't you can't be telling me you want me to come to new life with pastor. Come on, somebody. Amen. But he was not assignment, but he would do matter of fact. Time was so bad that when God was introduced to Gideon in scripture, the Bible said he is hiding in a cave, fresh and weak, trying to get a loaf of bread for the family. Come on, somebody. Hoping that the Midianites won't catch him, but God breaks into Gideon's life and enlists the service of an angel, and the angel makes an announcement when Gideon is at his first. How many know I found out this myself, Pastor, that when I did not want to go, God had to break me down. He had to say, no, I have an assignment for you to do. Amen. You sing, yes, you sing with the love, son. Yes, you sing. Come on, somebody. Amen. You sing it with the angel that's in Sarah. Yes, you are trying to form the NC mass part, but that's not the whole everything that I want you to do. That's an assignment that I want you to do. I want you, come on, somebody. Amen. I want you to preach my word. Amen. I don't care what you say, but I am planning it inside of you. And that's what he said to you, Pastor Coward. Even there was times you didn't want to go. I don't know how long you ran, but until you were that your work, you had to raise your hand and say, Lord, I'll go. Send me, I'll go. Come on, somebody. And, and Gideon was in that state at his word. God called him a mighty man of valor. Doesn't that look like he is set up to do much or nothing? Other than trying to get a meal to feed his family. But listen here, y'all. But when he is in a time of extreme crisis, extreme downsides, and God breaks in and makes an announcement through the angel and says, You mighty man of God, I have an assignment. No, you are in the time. I know you are in the time of downsizing. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Even through this pandemic, amen. God, not only me, not only Pastor Kawa, but I'm sure all pastors had to go through something knowing that this might be a season of downsizing. Come on, somebody. We're not sure how jobs are going to last. We wasn't sure how people were going to be able to enter to the church. We wasn't sure how people were going to pay their tithes. Come on, somebody. Amen. But how do you know God was still saying to me, I'm sure, to Pastor Coward, that don't worry, don't fret, because I am God, and I am going to work everything out all right, even though I might have to downsize the thing. But I want you to look at this thing, because it's not in the size of your congregation. It's not even in the size of how does somebody pay? But it's in the source. And when you rely on me, everything will work out all right. It might not look like it, but your bills are still going to 
fight the Midianites and save your people. Let me hear, is it just like God to show up when you're trying to figure out how you're going to get from week to week? Come on, somebody. Amen. From one week to another and give us a vision to do something spectacular. Amen. Is it just like God when you are asking God, God, did I hear you right? God, are you sure I'm supposed to be doing here, this year? Is it just like God when we feel more incompetent and more ineffective, more insecure, and Be a 
solution to the problem. Uh, but God saw something uh, in Gideon uh, that Gideon didn't see uh, in himself. Uh, the idea with this uh, is there something uh, when you don't see what somebody else sees. God said, I can take somebody else uh, and see something in you uh, that you don't see in yourself. Uh, but I come by to tell you uh, if God planted it in you, it's going to show up. Gideon gets 32,000 volunteers uh, and God tells Gideon that 
really who you are, he keeps the core of the thing. Can I get a witness? Amen. I don't know about you, but God has a certain folks that's going to stand by it no matter what. When the storms of life are raging, uh, you've got some folks uh, that's going to hang on in there. Uh, you've got some folks uh, that's not going to leave you because they're not able uh, to come back to church. Uh, you've got some folks uh, that's not going to leave you uh, because you don't have uh, communication uh, with one another. Uh, you've got some folks uh, that's going to stay right there and fight this thing together uh, because the God said,
says, okay, I got you, bro. I want you. <laughs> Amen. I need And sometimes we have to know that place that God has us is not uncomfortable. It's not uncomfortable. It is uncomfortable, excuse me. It is uncomfortable at times. But how I many know that's when God says, when you're uncomfortable, trust me. When things are not going the way you want it to go, trust me. Don't worry, Pastor Coward. You know, I think y'all going back to your church in a couple weeks. Amen. You still have some people that are not going to come back. Amen. You still have some people that are still afraid to come back. You have some people that done got relaxed on that couch. Oh yeah. Come on, somebody. They done got relaxed. They done got relaxed in a uh, 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 bedroom. What you call it? Amen. Everything is relaxed. Oh, I got a cup of coffee right here. Look at here. I got my preaching right here in front of me. Why should I have to go to the house of God? <laughs> I'm comfortable now. Amen. Amen. But the Bible said, but say by myself to assemble together. Amen. Amen. Yes, this is a season where you had to do it. But then when God starts clearly the air, we're going to see the people that really want to worship. <laughs> Come on, y'all. And I'm going to close. But I remember saying something on Facebook with Brother Lamont about three months ago and says, when we get, this is how we're going to do when we get back into the church. Come on, y'all. Come on, Patty. They had a dance floor. I said to myself, Brother Marcy, see, we ought to be doing that now. Come on, somebody. Hey, don't, don't wait till the battle is over. You ought to be able to shout now. What God is taking you through, you ought to be able to shout now. Oh, come on, y'all. And then we get over here, we ought to be crying on the rock. That's why the enemy catches us. Oh, God, we stop praising God because it's completely everything, you know, come on. This is a time to praise God. Amen. This time we're going to pray and dismiss at the same time. Amen. Let us bow my heads. Those that might be listening this afternoon to this message. And you still know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. I'm begging you. In a time that we're living in, if you don't know the Lord, you need to get to know Him right now. Don't wait too late. I've lost three family members since the year began. Getting ready to funeralize a cousin of the next week. But I know that God is in control. So I'm begging you tonight, today, that if you don't know Jesus, please accept him as your personal Savior. Because there's no way you can make it without Christ being in your life. Father God, we come to this evening to say thank you. We thank you for all you have done. We thank you, God, for the opportunity to come and to be with my brothers and sisters one more time. We understand what we had to go through. We had to be distant. But Lord, we thank you that we serve a God that hears and answers our prayers. We can be praying for one another and still not see each other. So Lord, we thank you for giving Pastor Cowan another opportunity to celebrate another anniversary. Lord, I know and you know that his road has not been easy. But you know as well as I know that he learned how to trust in you. And when he would sing that song, God will deliver on time. God, you delivered every time. I'm sure there was times he didn't feel like preaching. But Lord, we thank you for healing his body. We thank you for the strength that you've given him to carry on. We thank you, even as I watch some of the episodes on Facebook of someone else speaking, God, thank you for how you are able to bring others in to do what they need to do, God. And God, in the meantime, you're healing him and preparing him for what great things you have in store for new life. So, Lord, I pray for covering around him as they get ready to come back into the church. I pray, God, for everyone that comes to those that are still yet not coming. God, we pray that, again, that they still receive the word. And if they don't know you, Lord, they will bow down where they are and ask you to come inside. Lord, again, we thank you for Sister Coward. Her faithfulness to her church and to her husband. 
the Heavenly Father, she knows what any pastor's wife knows. It's not always easy. But Lord, we thank you because you, you are her help, helper. You are there when no one else is. When no one else stand by her husband, she will. So God, I pray that you continue to encourage her, encourage her and the children that they hold on to things that happened through this whole pandemic situation. Lord, we lost loved ones. We, we've been through the hospital. We've been through the sickness. We've been through a lot of things. We've lost friends. We, oh, God, we've lost many people in the last year. But God, I thank you because you told me it's not in my signs. It's in my source. Now, God, cover this church family and they bless their pastor. They love their pastor. And we forever ever give you praise, honor, and all the glory. Now, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ Rest with the Bible is now and forevermore. Let everybody say amen. Amen. Amen, amen. amen again. Amen. Clap your hands if you love the Lord.